Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakaha Kodash, and double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who are learned the truth of the gospel of Yahweh Shai from through the Holy Spirit. Honor, salutations, and blessings to the men that are preaching the gospel of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and all sincerity, diligence, and truth. And peace, grace, and blessings be upon the house of David, which is the elect men, women, and children that are listening and learning, staying in the Holy Spirit and keeping the faith of Yahweh Shai day in and day out. So um, just want to do a uh, lesson, Lord willing, of course, to be edifying unto the elect. Uh, basically, um, as the title reads, but these are written that ye may believe that Yahweh Shai is the Messiah. All right, the son of God. And that comes from uh, the book of uh, John, the 20th chapter. OK, and I was, you know, just reading, you know, through that uh, chapter. And, you know, that was a uh, toward the end, the last verse, actually, of the of, of that chapter. And I was just, uh, you know, just thinking about why, you know, we have the scriptures, you know, why uh, uh, the, the Holy Bible. All right. Or, you know, the Holy Scriptures were written. And, um, you know, when you really sit down and think about it you know it was really written for us to believe on yahweh shai right the, you know the whole entire <laughs> you know the whole entire uh, uh book right all of the various different you know the torah the prophets the psalms the gospels okay uh, even the apocrypha all those all these writings were all uh uh for the elect to believe on Yahweh Shai, all right, and, and especially in these days, okay, because as it says here, which I'll read, uh, John the twentieth chapter, verse thirty, and the subtitle it says, "Why this gospel was written," okay, it's good, you know, the gospel meaning good news. It says, "In many other signs, truly did Yahweh Shai in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book." So when Yahweh Shai was on the scene, you know, he did. He did a, a, a lot of things, okay, and and even the the scriptures, the gospels speak about a lot of things that Yahweh Shai did, but here John says that there there are a lot of things, you know, <laughs> many other signs that he did that is not even written. Verse thirty one, it says, "But these are written that ye might believe that Yahweh Shai is the Mashiach, the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing." ye might have life through his name okay so you no know, really the uh you know not just the gospel but the whole entire you know uh, uh bible was really written for the elect to believe on yahweh all right and believing on that name uh you know receiving repentance remission of sins that we may obtain um the gift all right the promise that the heavenly father has given us through Yahweh Shai, which is eternal life. Okay. And, and that's really what uh, a true, you know, uh, worshiper of Yahweh. Okay. Uh, Bashim Yahweh Shai is really, you know, waiting for, really hoping for. All right. That's what our faith is, it, it is, is all, you know, comes down to is the fact that we will, you know, be able to be uh, uh, joint heirs with Yahweh Shai and, to be able to be incorruptible, okay, to put off the, the, the mortal and put on the immortality. And there is no other book, there is no other uh, doctrine, there is no other uh, school of thought, right, <laughs> that speaks about eternal life on earth, all right? Obtaining eternal life, being an immortal on the earth. And that only once again comes by way of believing on Yahweh. You see? So this is the book of St. John, chapter 6, verse um, St. John chapter 6, verse 67. It says, I'm gonna start at 66. It says, For from that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. I mean, you know what? Let me start at 60. Um, 65 it says and he said there therefore i say unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father all right so the elect 
are chosen. All right. You can't you don't you don't make yourself the elect. But see, the book was written for the ones who were predestined to believe on Yahweh Shai. OK. And although we have not seen him, as it says in first Peter, we love him. All right. And we uh, we obey him. Which the scripture says, Yahweh Shai said that um, uh, uh, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. OK, so it says um, verse 66, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Yahweh Shai unto the twelve, will you go, will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou has the words of eternal life. And we believe that thou art sure, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Hamashiach, the son of the living God. You see that? And that's the same sentiment that we have in these in this very same age. But even more so because, see, Peter and, the, you know, the disciples back then, they saw they walked with Yahweh Shai. All right. I believe it was Peter who said, he, you know, he was a, um, an eyewitness to these things. Right. So they, you know, really didn't need. I mean, of course, you all need the scriptures, but. He was, Yahweh Shai literally was the, 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 the word made flesh. I believe that's why it says in the book of John, the uh, first chapter. Let me uh, get that. Uh, John chapter one. Let's see. Um, so I'll bear with me. Yep, John chapter 1, verse 14, it says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and uh, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the word, which which the scriptures, right, Yahweh Shai, as it says, as he said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it was written of me, right? He actually was that, that the word <laughs> was made flesh and remember the heavenly father he wants his uh 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 you know his his elect to believe on his word okay that is what true faith is by just by by wholeheartedly unwavering you know without a shadow of a doubt trusting somebody based off of what they say that is true faith OK, based off of what they say in Yahweh, you know, uh, uh, spoke. Right. His word into, in, you know, into existence, which is embodied by way of Yahweh Shai. So that is why believing on Yahweh Shai is the way to eternal life, because Yahweh Shai represents the word of the, the of the living God of Yahweh. OK. So these things were written. All of the scriptures from 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 Genesis one and one all the way to Revelation, the 22nd chapter, all those things was written and it all point unto believing on the word of God. And that word of God made flesh is who? Yahweh shot. OK, St. John, chapter five, verse thirty nine, search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. So, so Yahweh Shai, he, he <laughs> said it very clearly. You, if you search the scriptures and them, you think you have eternal life. Well, guess what? All that's going to point, all of the scriptures points right back to Yahweh Shai. He is the scriptures. The scriptures is him. And that's why these things was written. That's why John said that in, in the 20th chapter of, of uh, the book of John, that these things were written. So that we can believe on Yahweh Shai as the Messiah and the Son of God. And not everybody has that belief. Okay, even though the Bible is the most published book in the world, not everybody has that belief on Yahweh Shai being the Son of God, the, uh, being the, uh, the, anointed, uh, the anointed one, the Son of God. Okay, and they may say they may believe, but hey, as uh, James said, Show me your faith without works. I'll show you my faith by my works. 
All right. Romans chapter 15, verse four. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. OK, the things that were written, they were written for us to, in, in, in this day, in this time period to, to learn from. Because it is in this time period where Yahawashai and the, the spirit of Yahawashai is is brought is on the earth. OK, where the disciples, where the prophets were raised up, where the elect have turned back from the from the power of the darkness into his marvelous light. So all of the things that we read, they were all ultimately, you know, from thousands of years, you know, collected right of different captivities, different empires, different generations, all those things. The Lord kept preserved all the way up until this time for the purpose of us to learn of Yahweh. That's why even Yahweh said that they learn of me. <laughs> right. I am lowly and meek. So it says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that through the patience and the comfort of the scriptures might uh, through the page that we Salaki, through the patient and the comfort of the scriptures might have hope. All right. And we get that comfort be because of the spirit of truth, the comforter. All right. The Racha Kodash opening up, opening up our understanding to what the scriptures are speaking of. That's why Yahweh said that I will not leave you comfortless. All right. I will not leave you comfortless and I will uh, and I will uh, uh, send the comforter unto you. Well, the father will send the comforter unto you in my name. That's why when he um, raised up, he he uh, blew his breath upon the disciples and he said, and he said, what? Receive ye the Holy Spirit. OK, and that and that uh, spirit allows us to read these scriptures and to internalize them and to have Yahweh actually sup with us. As it says in Revelation, the third chapter, behold, I stand and knock at the door. He's not literally standing at, a, at, at your door knocking, but he's standing when you read these scriptures. <laughs> that's Yahweh knocking at your door saying, hey, you gonna let me, you know, let me in. OK, let me in and then I'm going to sup with you. And the things that you're going to need. In order to endure, in order to be uh, 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 made perfect, actually, I believe, uh, what is that? First Timothy or the second Timothy, right? Um, the things that you're going to need in order to endure and to be made perfect in order to uh, uh, ultimately become, you know, uh, uh, um, actually, let me just read it. Um, second Timothy chapter three, verse 15 it says and that from a child that has known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in hamashiach yahweh okay so once again it all points to yahweh all right these scriptures if you can read the scriptures up and down but if you don't have the faith in yahweh as being the son of the living god and it's that name okay that name is important because when he got crucified, right? Who did they crucify? When he shed his blood, whose whose blood were they were they uh, uh, um, shedding? Whose blood was shed for the remission of sins? It was not Jesus. Okay, Jesus did not shed his blood for the remission of sins, and that is important to understand because if you if you have your uh, uh, um, if you have faith in the blood of a of a of an individual to save you and you're calling and using the wrong name, then that blood that you're that you are, are calling upon, all right, or are you know calling upon to cover you is not actually real a real sacrifice that was given. It was only the blood of Yahweh that was the sacrifice that was given unto the Heavenly Father for the remission of sins. Point blank, period. All right. Verse uh, 16, it says all scripture are given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Well, Yahweh Shai is the king of righteousness. Right. So uh, all of the scriptures are for that purpose. It's all once again for the purpose of believing on Yahweh Shai, that the man of God may be perfect, 
thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All right. And how do you get that? By uh, 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 embodying, by living your life according to the word of God. Because the word of God is Yahweh. That's why we follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. All right. As Paul said, be followers of me as I am followers of Hamashiach. Okay. Um, first Corinthians chapter 10, verse uh, 11, it says, now all these things happened unto them for an, for an example, right? So the things that we, that we read about, although they actually did take place and occur, right? Like, like the, um, you know, us coming out of Egypt, right? Being in the wilderness for 40 years. All right. All of the things that we, we read about, although those things actually did take place, right? In, in, in real time, they were written, right? They happened and they were written for a purpose, as it says here. And they are written for our admonishment upon whom the ends of the world are come. Okay. And in the NLT, it says, these things happened to them as examples for us. They were written down to warn us who live at the end of the age. Okay, so the things that we read about, those things were not written for, you know, the scriptures was not written for everybody. The scriptures was written specifically for the elect. That's why in the book of Malachi, it calls it the book of remembrance. Okay, Malachi chapter thir uh, 3, verse 16, it says, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and thought and that thought upon his name. So the book was a book to uh, for us to remember. That's why Peter talked about uh, stirring up your pure minds by way of remembrance. When, our, when, when the prophets wrote these scriptures down, guess what? It was the spirit of Yahweh that was inspiring them to write these things down. Okay, let's prove it. First Peter, the second chapter. Actually, first Peter, the first chapter, I believe. First Peter, chapter one, verse, um, I'm going to start at nine. It says, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what in what manner of time the spirit of Hamashiach, which was in them, did signify. OK, so they the prophets, they wrote these things and they wanted to know when these things were going to happen. All right. They, they diligently searched. <laughs> all right. About, and you see that when, when Ezra, the conversation that Ezra had with the, uh, uh, the angel, uh, Uriel. Okay. He was asking questions about, okay, when are these things that, that I'm seeing these visions that you're giving me, when are these things going to happen? But it happened it's, it's it's manifesting, I should say. The 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 time for it to manifest is now. All right, you had the time where Yahweh came on the scene, right, to do to to be the sacrifice, and then you had the disciples at that time thought, all right, well, everything that the, the prophets you know were speaking about was going to happen now, but no, see, they didn't understand that he first had to suffer, he first had to die, he first had to give his life, you know, so that he can. Uh, uh, you know, uh, be that sacrificial lamb. But now, so when he was on the scene, then the disciples, they were commissioned to now go and preach and then write these things as well. So the things that even the disciples wrote, although they were, you know, uh, uh, looking back toward the prophets of the, of, you know, the old Testament. Now we have what the disciples saw and wrote and also what the prophets of, you know, uh, of the Old Testament saw and wrote. And it all in this generation is, a, is, is coming to its grand finale. 
All right. And the only thing as right now that we have is the word of the most high. And of course, we know that there is that, that spiritual power is going to manifest on the earth. Right. But the gathering of the of the uh, actually I think there's a scripture that, that says that the gathering of the uh, of the elect happened by way of um, preaching the word and believing based off of the preaching. OK. Um, Baruch chapter. I believe it's let me see. Yep. Yeah, Baruch chapter four, verse thirty six. O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east, and behold the joy that cometh for, uh, unto thee from the Most High. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. Right? The, the scattering, the diaspora, all right, throughout the four corners of the earth, Israel being scattered. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One rejoicing in the glory of God. All right, the Holy One is Yahweh. What is Yahweh's word? <laughs> Yahweh shot. The word was made flesh. So that's how the that's how we've been gathered together from the places that we've been scattered that we've been scattered. It was through the words that were written, which Yahweh Shai, and I got the last scripture, which Yahweh Shai is the word. Okay? Luke chapter 12, uh 24, verse. Uh, 44 it says and he said unto them these are the words which i spake unto you while i was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of moses and in the prophets and in the psalms concerning me okay so it was all written concerning yahweh now, of course, you have stories of other, you know, um, righteous men and you got stories of wicked men. OK, you got stories of of, uh, you know, uh, uh, wars and things of that nature. But the whole entire encompass of the, the, the scriptures all points to belief in Yahweh as the son of God. And that is what is written. And the beauty about it is what is written, what the Lord had wrote, uh, written down and preserved all these times, that was enough for his elect to believe on Yahweh Shah. Because you got certain people that read the scriptures and they're not convinced. All right. They're not convinced that that this is the son of God, that that that, that Yahweh Shah is the uh, <laughs> the uh, the son of the living God. They're not convinced, but we are. OK, we are wholeheartedly persuaded based off of what was given unto us, the scriptures that Yahweh is the Messiah, the son of the living God. And through him, we may have life eternal. OK, and that belief was only given into the elect of the nation of Israel. And that number, as it says here in second Ezra, the second chapter that was a specific number that was going to believe on that. All right. Second Ezra. Well, actually, it's not a specific number, but I mean, it is a specific number, but we don't know the number because it's innumerable. But the most high knows the number. You know, right? He he has what how many Israelites that he created to be a part of the first fruits. OK, second Ezra. We just know about the hundred and forty four thousand, the governing body. But then you also have the large multitude of of Israelites that are going to be delivered as well. But this is a uh, second Ezra chapter two, verse 40 says, take thy number O Sion and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Lord that thy people, which have been called from the beginning may be hallowed. All right. The ones who have been called from the beginning are the ones who this these scriptures was written for. All right. So that they can in this latter end, latter day, raise up, be raised up and believe on Yahweh Shai and love his appearing. Right. And be made ready as a bridegroom 
I mean, as the bride, when the bridegroom re returns, which we are about to witness that real, real soon. Okay, so, you know, Lord willing, this was edifying unto the elect. All right, they cherished the, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, the, the, the gift that the Most High gave us, man. All right, the gift of faith and then also giving us his word. Okay, so that we can believe on Yahweh Shah, although we have not seen him. And then knowing that we're about to see him and then be, be changed to be likened unto him. All right. So with that, giving all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Rechah Kodash. Till next time, Shalom.